Well, welcome to Business Clubs of America, our first uh, endeavor with uh, Star Worldwide Networks, and we're happy to be here. And with us today, we have Don Woodard with Dynamic Productions. And Don and I go back a few ways in radio, but I would like to ask you some, some basic questions for those that don't know about the wizardry that goes behind your productions. First of all, the, the, the most basic question is, what is a production company? Well, uh, thanks, Jim, and it's great being with you. Um, you know, when we talk about a production company, you know, the first thing that, that comes to people's minds is like a movie or a TV show. And the production company is essentially the, the manager who puts all of the pieces together. So like when you watch the credits at the end of a movie, you're seeing all those names go by, and the production company has literally put that team together. And so that's what a production company is. If essentially what we do is we find out what the client wants to do, if it's a big corporate show or a company meeting or something like that, and then we work out the elements for that show, whether it's a big stage, whether it's uh, pyrotechnics, whether it's uh, lighting and sound, whether it's video, all those elements. So as a production company, we basically pull all the pieces together and then we manage the process. So that really does separate you from an AV company. It does. So it and just it, set up the, the mics and the cables and, right. and sound and all of that. And, and we have a number of AV vendors that we work with and we use as part of our sure. team and it depends upon the project. Uh, but for instance, with a client who may have a, have, a, have a show to do, instead of them just calling an AV company or an equipment rental house, <laughs> The production company, you're getting the, 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 the expertise in the management. With the AV company, for the most part, you're now having to do the production yourself. You're right. having to manage all of the elements. You're having to, to take care of all of the details of what your show is going to look like. Now, if you've got a background where you did theater in college or whatever, you may have some experience in that. But what we, ha we go back to is, is that your best skill set? Sure. So as a company, you know, is it better for you to have somebody who can help you do it that can be part of your team, or is it good use of your time to be able to spend trying to do it? And if you're hiring an AV company, or if you're just going out and renting gear or individuals, it oftentimes isn't for a company in particular. All right, but let's say that I'm a small company, and I go to a hotel, a ballroom, and they've got their services that they provide. They've got the AV uh, component. They've got the sound, the lights. They've got the screen. And, and you, as you just said, put on these fairly extravagant shows. Could I still use you, even though I'm a small business oh, going definitely. to a hotel? Definitely, most definitely. Because you take the sting out of it, and also the production quality is on you instead of me because I have a meeting to run. It is and the other part of that is particularly you mentioned that the hotels and for instance uh, we work all over the world but here in Scottsdale for instance we have great relationships with a number of properties from uh, the uh, Scottsdale Plaza Resort to the Kierland to the Marriott <coughs> and uh, the difference is and, and quite honestly hotel audiovisual for a hotel is a lot like snacks in first class on an airplane. <laughs> There's a cost involved, and if you want food in the regular part of the airplane, it's going to cost you money. And the hotels see the audiovisual department as a profit center. So they will partner with a local audiovisual vendor, probably one of the ones that we use. Sure. But then they mark it up. And so what you're getting is essentially similar services that you can get for yourself, but for the sake of convenience, we have many clients who find themselves going into a hotel, signing up, say, yeah, I'll just use the hotel AV, not realizing they're probably paying 40 to 50 points more for the same services that we would bring in with the management and with the skill sets and the key people. Because for instance, if, you know, it's, it's like, well, a great example is like Dave Pratt's facility here that we're in. I mean, it, Dave calls it double wide network. And you was, well, as I remember the old double sure. wide trailer out in Guadalupe. Oh yeah. Okay. Well. It's where it all started. It, it was, it was where it all started. And, and it was a cool place and a cool time. And there was, there was Stoner and there was, there was Dave Pratt and a lot of the cool guys that went through that era. But that building had its own limitations as well. You know, as a radio station, it wasn't the greatest place in the world for sound. You know, if the program director was yelling at one of the overnight jocks in the next room to the studio, you could hear it in the <laughs> studio through those walls. And, you know, so Dave now has a facility where they can do these kinds of interviews like what we're doing. And so it's a better facility. It's a better skill level. And so he's got dedicated people and dedicated stuff that can do it. In what we do, when we bring in good people, we're not bringing beginners in. We're not bringing the newbies in. We're not 
creating your show, even if it's a simple show, it doesn't have to be an elaborate show. We've done the big cool shows, but the truth is there are a lot of simple company meetings that are critical to that company's bottom line. But you make them snap. We do, but we also make them within work. a budget. That's it. You know, for instance, if, if you're a company and you're going to build a building for your company to be in, you could physically go to Home Depot, buy the lumber, and build the building yourself, right? Right. The same thing is true. You could hire a local contractor, and that local contractor could come in, and he could physically build it for you based upon a drawing that you make. The difference is, is if you're building a building and you're, you're a real company, you're probably going to hire a contractor to build your sure. building and to make it right so that it's safe and it does everything that it needs to do. Same thing with your show. For instance, if you're doing a meeting for your company shareholders, you really don't want to screw up when you're communicating. Mm -hmm. You don't want to have that show, that meeting, hinge upon hiring somebody you don't know because they're part of a hotel or right. hiring somebody that you found on Facebook or that you found through LinkedIn, <laughs> you really want to find somebody who's got experience and expertise. One of the things that makes us unique is that we're scalable. You know, much like a motion picture, if we were shooting a small budget movie, you don't need the big huge crew that you need to make Star Wars. So we can scale for a small company meeting. It may only take three or four personnel and a smattering of audiovisual equipment that we can then help meet the budget they have to do that particular event. If they say, we'd like to put the CEO on stage on a horse. Okay, <laughs> we can do that. You know, it's, it's literally expandable based upon what the needs are, but ultimately it's like the client that we're working with right now. We had a great show last night. At the end of the show, he came to me, the CEO of the company he said, that was great. And I said, Will it help you sell product? He was a little surprised by that because the last production company that worked with him just wanted to do what they were hired to do and they didn't care if it sold exactly. or not. Because, and that's the bottom line for them. Or is, the end result. Right. Their bottom line is they have a physical product that they're trying to move. They have inventory. They have a need. So when he's up on stage talking, it's not just about and the you, lights and the sound. And we you did work. the wow factor, but the, the greatest question of all is, will that wow factor move product? Exactly. And, and nobody else bothered to, to well, really ask that. The last, client, the last company that was working with them on it fell into a situation where they, they felt comfortable. They were doing what they were hired to do, and they weren't going anything above and beyond. Right. And, and it's easy. I mean, we see that in service that we get every day, whether it's at, uh, you know, the grocery store or whatever. You get people who will actually go the second mile, help you find what you're looking sure. for and help you do what you want to do. Or people who just say, it's over there. And what we're trying to do as a company is we try to get beneath the surface and say, what is it you're trying to say? What is it that you're trying to sell? What is it that you want to do out of this? And how do we make it work? So, for instance, if putting them on a particular type of microphone, like a headset microphone, makes the sound come across better, then that's what we'll recommend. If they create a graphic, for instance, and the graphic is over a gray and white background, but the text is white, we might say, maybe you should take a second look at that or let our designer take a look at it, because once it goes up on a 35-foot screen, you're not going to be able to read where the white's over the, over the, over the gray. Right. And so those are the things where we come in more to help them communicate. It's not just about the show part. Especially when the economy collapsed and companies started pulling stuff back in and they started saying, you know, we really don't want to spend a lot of flat, you know, wow. And so, like, the moving lights went away, and maybe the, the entertainment went away and stuff. And the horse on stage went away. And the horse on stage <laughs> went away for the CEO, which we did in Dallas. But the, the ultimate thing for them still is they still have to get on a stage and communicate, whether it's to their employees, to their shareholders, to right. their salespeople. And ultimately, just like, you know, home publishing. You know, you and I have a good friend in markets over at uh, Printing Specialists. Right. A lot of people have laser printers at home, and they can print their own flyers and documents. But when it's important, they need to hire a professional. And the same thing's true with the company. The challenge is when it starts to get into the tens of thousands of dollars, and they say, well, maybe, maybe we can do it ourselves. We'll put it off on somebody's assistant, or we'll put it off on our internal you know, communications department or whatever. They can probably handle it. 
But at a certain point, you're putting everything on a load of people that don't do this every day, right. that don't do it for a living. And ultimately for us, we're as good as our last show. If we can't make it work for the client when they want to be able to you know, get up and speak, what, what's the purpose of right. anybody being there? If it fails, it's wrong. For us, it's got to be right every time. Well, let me ask you this, because you, do you, do you uh, entertain shows that are out of state? Oh, yeah. We, uh, we, we had the good fortune. Um, I've been very blessed. For a poor kid from New Mexico, I've, I've had a chance to touch almost every continent. Poor uh, gifted kid. No, no, it was lucky. I, I stumbled into a radio station at age 15, and, <laughs> and God opened up the doors from there. But the, the, the thing was, is, is because of this, I get a chance to do a lot of cool things and go cool places. But, and sometimes, for instance, you and I have talked about, uh, I had a chance to handle the video production for Microsoft for the Windows 8 rollout and managed a couple of shows, including the release of the, the Surface product and some of the other things. And again, it comes to it with Microsoft, they're expecting a certain level of success. Right. You know, I mean, if a company is struggling for their existence, they're not looking for somebody to say, well, we think this will work. No, they're looking for somebody to say, this Absolutely will, work, it's will gonna, work. Exactly. And so we have a chance to travel. Um, one of the things that's fun about uh, Donald Trump being in, the, in politics right now, we had a live interview with him. And we literally set up a studio much like what they've got here at Dave Pratt's place on the 25th floor of Trump Tower in his lobby. So we could do a three camera broadcast from his conference room. Now, what's funny now is now as they do the interviews with him, I'm seeing Fox News and CNN and everybody else basically copying what we did three years ago, <laughs> and they're going up on the, into Trump Tower and doing the same thing. So we can go anywhere and do it. You know, we're fortunate in the, in the show that we're currently doing. It's a big construction client, heavy equipment client, and their proving grounds are just south of Phoenix. So they're a Midwestern-based client, and they had a Chicago-based producer before. And that producer was costing them a fortune to come out to Arizona and wasn't doing the job. And somebody heard about us and says, hey, can you help us out? Yes, we can help you out. And in this case, it's different. It's like a fashion show for construction equipment out in the middle of the desert with pyrotechnics. And it's really cool. You know, I'll be honest with you. We watched these big, monstrous pieces of equipment moving around. And I told one of my spotlight operators, it's like a fashion show. You follow the action. Yeah. Well, but for us, in a lot of ways, it is similar. You know, I, we've done fashion shows. One of the big advertising agencies here in Phoenix had to do an event a few years ago, and we produced the show, and part of it was a fashion show. The idea is the same. You follow the action, you make sure that it's there, you make sure people can see and people can hear. Ultimately, for a company, and that's the core of our business, it's about dollars and cents. And you don't want to just try to save a dime here that'll cost you a dollar there. Sure. You know, and ultimately for us, it's not just about how much money we make on it, it's do we help you do what you want to do? And that's, that's the end of the day. And if it doesn't get done that way, then there's no reason to hire a production company. And how long, how long have you been doing this? Oh, gee. Um, well, As Dynamic Productions. Dynamic's about uh, seven years ago. We formed the company just in time for the recession to come in. Great timing. Uh, <laughs> one of my clients is Robert Kiyosaki, the Rich Dad, Poor Dad author. And Robert was one of the people kicking me in the butt. And he kept saying, you've got to have an entity. Well, I was a freelance producer director. I didn't have any ties. I didn't have any responsibility. <laughs> All I had to do was be my best for any given client at any given time. Hired gun. Hired gun. That's exactly it. And so I had done that for 20 years and had had the opportunity doing shows, everybody from, you know, from Microsoft to American Express to Discover Card. You know, and literally traveling the world doing this. And so doing Dynamic, we realized that, okay, there's a lot of stuff out there with people who maybe they're a one-man shop, some, some lone producer or director like what, similar to what I was doing, or they're a company. But the goal is to find a business that does business. You know, very much like, you know, one of the important things about what, what you do with BCA is you're finding a way to connect different people in businesses and expand their circles, right? That's one of the things we do, yes. Yeah. And, Try to do. Well, and you do it well, and, but that's Thank one of you. the cool things about me being a part of B BCA is I have a, an opportunity. I may not be getting clients out of BCA because the truth is a lot of the smaller companies aren't going to be doing a show for 200 people. 
you know, maybe American Express is, maybe uh, Waste Management is, but the smaller companies, you know, are, are going to be, but I get a chance to hear what those bosses are saying, what the heads of these companies are saying about what their companies are doing, what their expectations are. It becomes an opportunity for me, a learning our, curve, representing our company, to be able to look at how business is being done with other businesses. And that's become a real important thing you know, for us to look at because we're dealing with people, whether it's on a macro level like a big construction equipment company or on a micro level like a company that has 100 people that needs to do an annual sales meeting and they need to get it right. You know, and that's, that's what it's important in this stuff is to be able to say, hey, can I get on stage? You've, you've had this, we've done this together and that's one of the reasons I, I got involved with BCA. When you get on stage for one of the BCA signature events, do you worry about, the, about the, how the show's gonna go? I'm absolutely confident that you will cover my back. Because? Because you're really good at what you do. <laughs> right. And you have all the, all the, all the uh, components in working order, shall we say, except yeah. for the presenter sometimes, well, and that's me. But even there, you know, if we can say, you know, here's what we can do, here's what, how we can do it. That's, that's a big part of helping these clients do what they do. Same thing is, for instance, and you know, we talked earlier about hiring an audiovisual company or renting the equipment or using their internal personnel. Right. The, the best use of their skill set, if they're not used to putting people in front of an audience, they may not realize that, hey, if we put a video monitor down on the floor with this, tel with this, with this PowerPoint on it, he can see the slides without turning around and Imagine looking at that. the Imagine that. But, but that makes Nobody it, thought of it. Well, and a lot of people, when they do their own thing, don't. Sure. But when we do it over and over, we get, one, the benefit of the experience of our company and our team, which is, again, scalable. Or have been there and done it. Who have been there and done it. And at the same time, though, we also have the benefit of being able to get costs down. So, for instance, where let's say that your company was hiring an audiovisual company, you're a one-off for them whether it's with the hotel or whether it's independently, right. you're gonna call the AV company and they're gonna say, okay, here's our price. Whereas when we call that same audiovisual company, if we've done six shows using that AV company that year, my cost per show is gonna be lower because they want my business. Right. They want those six shows as opposed to just one show here and one show there. So we're able to bring a better price point in. So in a lot of ways, we get the experience, we get the better price point, and but honestly, the quality doesn't suffer. The quality doesn't suffer, and that's the cool part of it. And it's fun. Let me ask you one last question. Because of the myriad of shows that you've done, the scope of work that you've been, that, you, that your wizardry addresses, what would be your, your greatest adventure in, in video? What would, oh, be wow. your, what would be your most favorite show? Maybe not because it was elaborate, because maybe it's because it was challenging. What would you consider to be your best effort? Wow, um, and, and I thank you for that. But you know, the, the funny thing for me on that is there have been so many cool things, you know, like the one that we're doing right now, um, the show that we're doing. When we first heard this one, the first thing I did when I knew that we wanted to use pyrotechnics is I called Kerry Welte here in Arizona, who's like the fireworks guy. He does does the Arizona Cardinals, he does the... So yeah, the, the best of the best. He's the best of the best. So he so was I, your consultant? Yeah, I called Kerry and I said, we need you. And so Kerry's like, great. He and I have worked together for 20 years. So Kerry and I were able to go in and say, here's what we can do. And the client's like, that's really cool. Now, they had similar shows in the past, but we were able to marry different things together. So. You know, like I said, we've done things from putting a horse on stage and everything else. One of the most interesting ones, and I'll tell you this one simply because it, it has two sides of it. You mentioned video, and I, as we've talked about, I started in radio, then I moved into television, then I started doing these corporate shows. I still dabble in video. Um, we do a TV project probably once every six, 12 months, and we have the resources to do it. But um, we had a project uh, a few years back, I guess it's been about 15 years now, where I had the challenge of the client had, had a software company. They had sold the company to Symantec. It was a Phoenix-based company at the time. They're now a global-based company, and we still do some of their corporate meetings. But at that time, they had sold their software to Symantec, and then they bought it back three years later. Well, the CEO wanted to do an announcement to all the salespeople that they had this product again to sell. And the idea was that we would take the original Back to the Future movie trailer. Oh, boy. Okay, and I mean the very first movie, the very first time in the 1980s and reshoot it frame for frame. 
And it, the interesting thing about that was at the time that DeLorean, the one in the movie, wasn't built yet. So they shot, when they produced the movie trailer, they shot all these esoteric shots to the outside of the DeLorean and everything else. Well, in the movie, there's a scene when the DeLorean door opens up and Michael J. Fox is there in the, in the denim jacket and the big aviators. The voiceover says, how far are you going? He says, about 30 years. And that's the gag of the movie, and the, the car flies off. And then into the there's distance. a, right, 30 years later, here's the Exactly. Well, the in, buyback. In our case, what we did was the door opens up, and it's the CEO of the company with the aviators, and the voice says, How far are you going? And he goes, Well, about 3 million customers. Nice. All right. Well, so we do that on the video side. So we went out here by Lake Pleasant, found an old piece of road where they, when they built the turn off on the freeway, they had this piece of road. We got permits, and we brought the pyrotechnicians out. And we did the whole shoot of the DeLorean and the flames going off into the distance. So when they had their sales meeting up here in Scottsdale at the Scottsdale Conference Resort, that's what we rolled for the opening video in front of all these sales guys. That's a wow. Well, and they loved it. That's a wow. They're like, yeah. Well, they start applauding. The curtain opens. Pyro goes off in the ballroom and the DeLorean rolls out on stage in oh, front of them. Man. And the CEO opens the door and gets out, out of the hatch he comes. To give his speech, having come back from the future. So that was his gag to talk about where the company's going to go. Sure. So, I mean, that was cool because it was, it was cool, it was interesting, and it, it established what they were doing in the meeting. It was a good setup. You know, we can do anything. And, and we always joke, it, it depends on the size of the checkbook and the ego of the CEO. <laughs> uh, you know, if he wants to come in on a horse like we did in Dallas for Supercuts, um, if he wants to fly out on stage as Superman, we can do that. If they want a laser light show, we can get lasers. Sure. But, but ultimately, where we always go back to is how is this helping you communicate the show? Right. In that case... And what will it sell? Yeah, and it was perfectly in line because what they wanted to do was say, this is our future. This is where we're going. Nice. Um, we did what we just worked with a client here in town, a big software company. Um, they just did a Star Wars thing because, of course, Star Wars just opened up. They came up with this idea and we went, that's brilliant. Where the opening day, the CEO introduced all the 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 C-level the staff dressed as Star Wars characters. <laughs> and it was hysterical. My, and it was a great my. way to break the ice for all the salespeople and everything else. And it gave them a sense of fun. Was it expensive? No. You know, you got some right. costumes. But it still made the impact. But it made impact. And so the, a lot of times that's what we're trying to find a way to do, is find a way to help them communicate. We can do anything from just saying, okay, we'll help you with the AV, we'll help you with that, we'll help you produce the media, we'll help you to produce the graphics, we can get into the design thing. If you need a meeting planner to help book the rooms and everything else, we've got access to those kinds of people. Um, ultimately, the cool thing about all this, it's never the same. And you love what you do. I do. It's a ball, and I, and I enjoy it. And, well, i got to tell you, we're happy to have oh, you at BCA. You. <laughs> this is the local wizard, Don Woodard, and we have uh, Dynamic Productions with us today. Thank you, Don. Thank you so much, Jim. I appreciate it.